I want to salute Chairman O'Malley Ishitala, who is my leadership, who will be speaking shortly, and just really salute that brilliant and, and incredibly dynamic presentation by Luizi Kinshasa, the Secretary General of the African Socialist International. So it is a great honor to be here again as a member of the African People's Solidarity Committee, the organization of white people that was formed by the African People's Socialist Party. And I also want to salute Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shetela, who so many of us in the African People's Solidarity Committee worked directly under her office in the work on many fronts of going into the white community to organize other white people um, to take a stand in genuine solidarity with the liberation of African people and for reparations to African people. And, you know, I want to say that the understandings that I present today and any time that, that, I, that I speak or, you know, in, in anywhere organizing, um, I could never come to these conclusions. I understand this because of the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party and the political theory called African internationalism that is put forward by Chairman Omali Shetela and which represents the world as seen and experienced by African and colonized people, which is something that they call on us as white people to adopt this, this viewpoint and begin to see the world through the eyes of those who have who have been, as the chairman says, the objects of history under this, this system. And again, I could never come to the conclusions that, you know, that I can understand today, but it is extremely liberating for me and for us as members of the Solidarity Committee from the white colonizer population to, to be able to see the world as experienced by the African working class and the oppressed and colonized peoples of this planet. And again, I express my unity with S.G. Lewaisi's presentation and have the responsibility to reiterate some of what is said there. And, you know, what I have learned from my years of working under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party, which has unconditional solidarity with the indigenous people and all oppressed and colonized peoples, is that when indigenous people had power, when they had control of their land, when they had their land, and when African people had their land, and when the people on the planet Earth still had power over their lives, that they had a dialectical view of the world, the interconnectedness of all things. And this dialectical worldview was not just because they were incredibly wise people, of course they were, but it was based on their mode of production that was, that was built around producing and reproducing life for their community, for their nation, for their civilization, um, for their land and for the earth itself. And before the, white people stepped out of Europe to begin the assault on Africa, indigenous, and the rest of the world, there was no capitalism, there was feudalism, but there was no capitalism. There was no private ownership of the land outside of Europe. There was no production for profit, no world economy, and that there was no such thing as certain things being produced regardless of the expense and at the expense of others or the majority of, of humanity. And that there was, there was no problem with the environment. And so capitalism as Chairman O'Malley Shetela has shown us scientifically was not born benignly. It was not something that started out well, but then went bad. And it's not even mysterious how it started. Capitalism was born by Europeans leaving Europe's shores to go out to Africa, the Americas, Asia, and the Middle East to plunder, to steal, to pillage, to rape, to occupy, to capture and destroy human beings, to turn human beings African people into items for sale, into commodities, to work them to 
death as a means of production, to use them up, throw them away and get more. And when needed, which was always, to wipe out whole peoples and to do so fast, to wipe out whole regions before, before there was a word called genocide. This is how capitalism was born and it's still true today. And that this is what created capitalism. It is a parasitic system and it created this concept and, and material basis of whiteness and white people and it created the concept of race for to justify the colonial reality of this incredible extraction of wealth for a tiny minority of the world's population at the expense of everyone else. And this is what started 600 years ago, and this is what exists today. And that when we look at colonialism, we're talking about the colonizer and the colonized. We are talking about white people are the colonizer wherever we are. No, we're not all Bill Gates or anything like that, but we sit on the pedestal of the oppression of African people on stolen land of the indigenous people. And this is the perspective and our every aspiration and dream and ability to enjoy social wealth um, and resources and even democracy itself comes at the expense of African and indigenous people. So if we see the world that way and we begin to understand very clearly that there is no distinction between ravaging the human beings and the hundreds of millions of human beings and civilizations already driven to extinction to create wealth for white people and rabbit ravaging the environment. Where is the line between that, that goes together hand in hand, that is a dialectical reality. And that now, um, and that an estimated 300 million, at least indigenous and African people, and I don't think it can be calcula calculated in numbers, but at least 300 million indigenous and African people have been wiped out in this process of Europe and white people spanning the globe and, and decimating, uh, raping and, and pillaging Africa, African people, indigenous people and oppressed people around the world. And now that the world is heating up perilously, the first problem that many white environmentalists, such as the Sierra Club, for example, cite is quote, overpopulation when in fact white people use 80% of the world's resources. So the main problem is not human, as S.G. As, as Lewazy very, very um, eloquently said, it is not human-based climate change, it is capitalist caused climate change. <clears throat> and I wanted to say just some of the realities that we can attribute to colonialism today in terms of, quote, the environment that the situation is dire. It affects Africa, Africa and the Southern hemisphere profoundly. And that um, many scientists have stated that they do not put out the full extent of the reality because they will lose their funding and grants. And that some of the facts that I have seen from, from reading this and studying this is that the earth today has not been as hot as it is for 120,000 years, and that there has not been this much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere for 800,000 years. And that in other words, human beings have never lived on the planet with this amount of heat and this amount of carbon dioxide. And that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, as probably most people know on this, on this Zoom event, means that greenhouse gases, or they're called greenhouse gases, and they surround the earth and, and that keep the, the heat locked in as if you were in a greenhouse where plants are grown. It keeps both the heat and the humidity locked in. 
and that this is caused primarily, as has been said, by the capitalist and the capitalist lifestyle, the fossil fuels, the cars, the planes, the electricity, and, and many other ways of the uh, ravaging of the earth by, by colonialism, colonial violence, colonial wars, and that, um, that this, it, this explosion of, of carbon dioxide increases the temperature of the earth. It causes the melting of the glaciers, the ice cap in North and South Poles, which not only raises the sea level, but it also, it also um, desalinates the water. It makes it, the oceans, it makes them acidic and it messes up the natural currents of the air and the ocean, which is, um, you know, the ocean, as has been said in other presentations, is dying. Uh, more and more species of sea life are, are dying every single day. Well, when there was ice, um, you know, at, in the North and South Pole, the ice deflects the sun's rays away from the earth and it's a natural coolant. But the Arctic and the uh, Antarctic is actually heating up faster than any other part of the planet. So the ice is melting rapidly. We see uh, wildfires in the Arctic Circle, which they don't even have fire departments. I mean, you know, you see these things burning. Um, you see it warmer in Alaska than it is, you know, in Texas, like we saw this past winter, and that we see the, um, the melting ice, the fires, and the, and, and the melting ice exposes rotten leaves and trees of hundreds of thousands of years ago, and those rotten trees and leaves and uh, release more methane gas, so it creates what's called a, a reinforcing loop feedback loop that continues itself. And this creates intensity of weather, fire, droughts, hurricanes, floods that can no longer, that, that, that come into an area and stay there because the, um, the currents, the sea and air currents have become so weakened, they can't move a storm. So a storm stays longer, it releases more rain, et cetera, or drought stays longer. And, and the rain can't come in. And as has been said, 200 species a day are going extinct. And that this is, again, you know, they call it Anthropocene climate change, but it is, which means it was created by human beings. But in fact, this is Imperial Pocene climate change. It is parasitic capitalism. And it has been imposed on the rest of humanity by white power by Europe, by imperialism and, and colonialism. And they often measure the, the uh, increase in temperature of the earth based on the year 1750, which they say is, was the beginning of the industrial revolution, but without mentioning that 1750 would be the height of the colonial trade in African human beings and the genocide of the indigenous people and colonial conquest around the world. It was also a very strong height of, of the opium trade from Britain into China, which uh, Karl Marx uh, lists as one of the primitive accumulation of capital that Chairman O'Malley Chatella has summed up. And so, you know, so this is what we're saying. Where is the line between genocide, between the extinction of the bison, which is an environmental problem that could be extracted, um, and the extermination of the indigenous people by colonialism with the complicity of the white population who were the settler colonizers of this stolen land. And that, you know, imperialism's own solutions are crazy. Um, they, they are things, and you, and you can read about these, this is in major media, such as huge machines that suck the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere or placing giant mirrors all over uh, or less fossil fuels, but the fact is, as Chairman O'Malley Chatella and the African People's Socialist Party has made very clear, there is no solution in shifting from fossil fuels to solar or wind or oil or nuclear under profit generating parasitic capitalism. To, it, as we've seen, I mean, as the other presentations made clear that the colonial relationship 
remains the same unless US imperialism and world capitalism is brought down once and for all. And so the first and most critical goal for all environmentalists is the total destruction of parasitic capitalism, the profit motive, colonialism and white power. And we don't change the environment just by saying we ought to do this. The US fights wars, it has colonial state power, it has the biggest military on the planet that goes in and slaughters people for fossil fuels over and over again, as we see as the uh, imperialist power of this period. And that when African workers and the colonized of this earth have power once again over their lives, over their land, when they own the means of production for the needs of the people, only then will this problem be solved. And it is a daunting and huge problem. There is no solution otherwise. There is no white solution. There is no American solution. There is no reform. There is no solution whatsoever under capitalism. The, the, those and the system that created the problem cannot solve it. It cannot solve it. And that um, there is no reform that can do that. And that imperialism and parasitic capitalism must go. There is not a list of isms and we pick our favorite. There is a main contradiction in the world today and it must be overturned. And that is the colonial domination of the majority of the people on the planet Earth. Colonialism and the environmental crisis are one and the same. There is a dialectical interrelationship between the anti-colonial struggle of African people, of indigenous people for their land, for their resources, for reparations, and the solutions to the climate crisis. It's all connected and part of the same struggle. So the best thing that any white person concerned about the environment can do is get organized under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party, which is leading the world struggle, the world revolution against capitalism that will bring down this parasitic system when African people are in the process of liberating Africa. US government and US system cannot continue to exist while, um, while Africa is free because we've seen you know, its reliance on the, on the poverty that's forced onto the people there and the theft of the resources of Africa every single day to build the lifestyle and continue the lifestyle that we take for granted. And that we must pay reparations. We must be part of a revolutionary strategy of the African working class to extend the African revolution behind enemy lines into white society under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. We must build genuine solidarity with the African revolution and say and fight for unity through reparations, Uhuru.